Do you have a belief that you're not creative? Even if you do think you're creative, this episode will definitely change your perception of creativity. Creativity coach Dr. Marion Piper joins me in this episode to dispel the myth that creativity is only for artists. She shares strategies on how anyone can tap into their innate creativity to solve problems and make a difference with their business. Dr. Maz also shares some practical steps to help your creativity flow, such as setting boundaries, limiting overwhelming inputs, and staying creative during uncertain times. By the end of this episode, you'll be able to see that your business is an art form and creativity is your greatest asset. Welcome to the Powerful Content Podcast, your go-to source for content creation, strategy, and business inspiration. I'm your host, Mel Daniels, content strategist, coach, and speaker, empowering women across the globe to grow their business with powerful content that connects, nurtures, and converts. So if you're ready to create standout content that gets you noticed and remembered, or build an aligned audience who love you and are ready to buy from you, you're in the right place. I believe that content has the power to connect us all. It's up to you how you use it. Listen in for genuine and insightful chats with guests, as well as practical tools and strategies from me. It's so lovely to have you here. Let's dive into the show. I acknowledge the Wongal people of the Eora Nation as the traditional custodians of the country that I am recording from today. I recognise their continuing connection to the land and waters. I pay my respects to elders past and present and extend that respect to all First Nation people listening today. Hello, hello, beautiful people, and welcome to episode 139 of the Powerful Content Podcast. Thank you so much for being here. When I know that there are so many other choices out there, I truly appreciate you being here. As you can tell by the title of my episode, today we're talking about creativity and the impact it can have on our business. And to lead us in this discussion today, I have with me the amazing Dr. Marion Piper, otherwise known as Dr. Maz. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. Maz. Oh my gosh, so pumped to be here. (laughs) So very excited to hear your insights around creativity because I know that so many of us believe that we are not creative, let alone how we can actually bring it to our business. So I'm really looking forward to this discussion. But before we jump into this, before we hit record, I asked you a question. I'm going to ask you it again. I know that in your bio, and if anyone wants to check out uh, Dr. Maz's bio, just head on down to the show notes, but you've done a lot of traveling in your life. And you said that you visited 31 countries or something phenomenal like that, which I think is just absolutely amazing. But what's your favorite place you visited and why? Ah, uh, this I, I love talking about travel. and. For anyone like who see, who thinks that travel is really unreachable, I have literally done all my, I'd probably say like 90% of my travel by the skin of my teeth, <laughs> just purely, um, absolutely winging it and staying in hostels and couch surfing. So, you know, there's, there's so many different ways that you can do it. Um, but yeah, as we were talking about, um, before we hit record, uh, I think that, uh, I'm a very experience driven person. And so there's been a few places that I've been that have just had this enormous energy, this enormous grounding energy that makes me feel connected, like I belong, like I've been there before. And the places that have done that were definitely um, the Inca Trail in Peru was a very significant time in my life. It was right in the middle of an 11 month backpacking trip that I did uh, when I was like 23. Uh, which I highly recommend doing um, if you are if you haven't done that kind of travel before. It is definitely life changing, uh, and I just felt like I was, you know, a reincarnated Incan princess because uh, everything just looked familiar, and I knew where to walk, and you know, and I there's certain points where I stopped and reflected, and I, you know, had all these insights come through. The only other places that I've actually had that similar experience or that similar feeling uh, was out at Uluru here in Australia. Uh, which just has this amazing magnetic pull. Uh, and then in Bali as well too, up in Ubud, which definitely has that flavor to it with all the yogis and meditation. And, and it, you know, people gravitate to those spaces for a reason because they are historically like very significant places of spiritual connection and ritual and storytelling. And 
you know, I also sort of discovered in, when I was researching these places as well, after the fact that there are also chakra points in the planet. So there's seven chakra points to mirror the ones that we have in our body. Um, if you're into that kind of thing. Um, and so I thought that was a really interesting, um, connection that I made. Also a very creative connection, uh, to be completely on brand. <laughs> And I was just going to say that it was really interesting that you mentioned with all of these places that there was a sense of connection, a sense of ritual and a sense of storytelling, which I assume, I shouldn't assume, but I assume that we're going to talk about more about today, is connected to creativity as well. Oh, absolutely. Because my, uh, you know, so, you know, you kind of hinted it at the start. Most people, a lot of people don't think that they're creative. And I think that's because... Uh, over history, uh, the word create, creative or creativity has really been um, assigned to art and art making and performance and music. And, and that's really been for a certain type of person or a certain type of self-expression. But actually, creativity is the process that is underneath all of those things. And it's a process of connecting the dots in new and interesting ways to make something exist that hasn't existed before. So what that actually looks like, the end product, that's not really what creativity is concerned with. It's concerned with how you get there, what dots you're looking at, and what connections that you make uh, that are, you know, from your perspective and your opinion um, and your background and your skills and your goals uh, will really determine the form that it needs to take. Um, and that's why, you know, I've, I've been, you know, I've been saying this for a while that I think that business is one of the most creative art forms there is because you are literally doing something that no one's ever done before. Even if it is in the same industry, even if it's with the same skill, you've never done it before. So we're, therefore it is a new creation. And I think if more people were to embrace this philosophy of business as an art form, it would kind of change how you look at what you're doing, especially the stuff that challenges you, especially the stuff that you don't want to do, um, as well as what you, you know, the things of it that you love. But yeah, it's an incredibly creative process, I think, because, you know, you're, you're coming to solve a problem for people. And in essence, that is one of the best ways to use creativity is as a problem solving tool. I love all of those things. Oh my goodness. I'm going to pull out a couple of them. So you've said that creativity is a process and I particularly like this definition because like you said, when we think of creativity, we usually think of the outcome. So what is that piece of art? What is that piece of music? What is that blanket that I've crocheted? You know, we, we're thinking of what the actual outcome is rather than all of the little steps along the way. And it's about how you actually get there. And the other thing that I really loved that you said was that creativity is unique. So whether we're coming to it from a, from our business, whether we're coming to it from a producing something artistic, it's all about us as individuals. Because like we know, like when we go to an art gallery, we see so many paintings, but no two are the same. You know, there's no two that are in the same style. So I just really love that explanation because I think that it will help people who feel like that they are not creative, that, that we are, we are in essence, we all have this uh, innate creativity inside of us. So if we, if we think of creativity as a process, let's talk about how we can apply that to our business as business owners. So what's the benefits perhaps of being creative? Oh, great question. Are there, I mean, there are so many, but um, fundamentally, I think it, it's tied to what you're saying, what you, what you pulled out of what I'd said about creativity being unique you know, your creative self-expression, who you are as the culmination of your beliefs, your thoughts, your actions, your experience. It's what is actually going to make you stand out <laughs> because, um, you know, where it doesn't matter if you are the absolute best designer or the absolute best, you know, coach or whatever. There are so many good coaches out there. There are so many good copywriters, designers, you know, insert, um, job title here. Um, but what there aren't any more of is you. And I, th I think, you know, in my experience, I've seen the people that have the best reach and have the biggest impact are the ones that really hone in on what they want to talk about, what they want to express. And they come at it from a really personal angle. So, you know, when we think about creativity as this process of connecting the dots in new, in new and interesting ways, Every business has key messages 
Um, every business can come up with a key message that is, you know, I want to improve my client's outcomes, like most boring key message ever, ever in the world. But you layer on your experience and, and the things that you're passionate about over that message. And then all of a sudden it becomes something really unique because it is specifically about you and what you offer. It might be how you do it. It might be why you do it. It might be when you do it. It doesn't really matter. Um, but as long as it's from you and from your perspective, I think it's one of the, it's one of the fastest ways to stand out. Even if you think about how you dress, how you present yourself, your branding, uh, the way that you speak to people, how you sign off an email, like these are all the little minute details, what I call the dots that when joined together, and if you actually pay attention to how you are presenting these to the world. It's that whole picture that eventually comes together when somebody interacts with you that is going to make all the difference in business. And I love that you're explaining this to my listeners right now, Dr. Maz, because I talk a lot about how your core belief are what it, are your essential you know, part of you and it's exactly what makes you unique. So if for you to be able to say that creativity can help you do this or it's an expression of exactly how you present and it can actually help you stand out in the crowd. I just think that that gives a beautiful holistic perspective that there is so much that you can do with your business and your brand when you really think about that creative space and being more you. So we know then that creativity can help us to uh, facilitate standing out more online is, are there any other benefits of creativity? Oh my gosh. There are um, a couple other ones that I want to call out. Um, and I hinted at it just before, um, which is about solving problems. So the creative process itself, um, and you know, if you're not familiar with the fun, like the basic building blocks of the creative process, just do a quick Google. <laughs> I've got my own framework, which I call Spiral Up, where each of the letters are an acronym through a very specific trauma-informed creative process, if that's your angle, if that's what you, the path you want to go down. Um, but essentially, um, when we are solving a problem, um, you kind of have to tap into the two different thinking styles, which creativity allows us to do, which are our divergent thinking and our convergent thinking. So our divergent thinking is when you are sitting down to solve a problem, um, you want to come up with as many solutions as possible. So this is where um, brainstorming is really good, um, with, especially with other people, because we all have such different perspectives. Um, but coming up with as many, many possible solutions to this one problem as you can. Uh, and then when you, are, when you actually want to um, take action, so this is the step after that initial thinking, when you want to take action, you've got to tap into convergent thinking, which is basically the refining process. So it's like you could look at all those options and go, okay, what are the three most likely possible ones? that I could take action on or that I could give uh, a shot right now. So, um, cause essentially when we, when we are in a creation process, um, it doesn't all come from us, right? So we got to spend, you know, the first bit of the process getting inspired, you know, we take cues from our environment. So you might look to other people, you might look to your competitors, you might look to other industries. Uh, you could ask friends and family, you could do a bit of research and reading, like all of those activities, those really practical activities are how we start to form uh, a picture of, of like who we are and what we think and what we believe. Um, and where I see people kind of fall short is that they spend a lot of time doing that. Um, and that's probably too much time. And then they get really overwhelmed because now all the, the only voices that they can hear in their head are the voices of other people. And this happens, this happens to me, like it happens to my friends, like everybody that I know goes through this. So it's, nobody is immune. It's a very human thing to do. But the challenge then is that you have to kind of limit yourself to the amount of inputs that you allow to bring into your brain. And then you want to spend some time actually like deep thinking and mulling over all the options that you've selected or all the inputs you've selected and think to yourself, what do I actually think about this? What's my perspective? Based on my experience, based on my future goals, you know, what do I think is the best solution to this problem? You know, and I, that's where I think, you know, you mentioned, um, you know, your beliefs. I think also your personal values can be really a really useful filter at that point. 
And if anybody hasn't done that values work, oh my God, you're missing out on an amazing decision-making filter. Uh, but you know, it's, it's these things that we develop, these tools we develop that allow us to really tap into our own creativity and our own innate creativity, because we all have different expressions and different, um, I suppose, default modes when it comes to this stuff. Some people will be really visual. Others will be really verbal. Others will be more written. You know, it might be a combination of all of them. Um, but when we are in business and we are tackling these really, really big problems, particularly for our clients, um, taking the time to actually step back and, and, you know, really, really think about, you know, what, what, what do I want out of this? What can I contribute rather than just taking everybody else's word as gospel? <laughs> um, you know, this is what's going to give you some leverage and it's what's going to help you solve problems in more interesting ways for people rather than just the usual like transactional approach of like, oh, my client needs this thing. I'll give them this thing. You know what I mean? So much goodness in there. I'm just listening to you talk, Dr. Maz. I'm going, yep, I agree with that. I can see how that can be applied to content creation and content strategy as well. Like all of these concepts really resonate with creating content. You mentioned about not getting stuck in the cycle of too much input. And I think that a lot of us, especially my listeners who are solo printers usually, or may have small teams, it's just them. It's just them. And so you can get stuck in this cycle of comparing yourself to other people and relying on what other people say and their thoughts and their thought leadership and just taking that on as your own. So separating yourself from, I guess, too much input, it can be a really good thing is what I'm hearing. Yeah. If you, so a couple of things here. Uh, one of the things I would love people to remember is that creativity thrives in constraints. So when I'm starting something new, when I'm diving into a new project, I will put up probably like too many constraints on myself. Because as someone who has like a delightfully neuro spicy brain, I would just go off for, for days, for weeks, for months and just enjoy because I love that. Like I love that like inspiration. Like everybody loves being in inspiration too. It's like that really like high energy, really excited, enthusiastic. So I literally will put guardrails around myself, whether that be, okay, I'm only allowed to read three blogs. I'm only allowed to listen to three podcasts. I'm only allowed, I'm not allowed to look at anybody in my industry, but I have to find a complementary industry. And I'm only allowed to look at three people from that industry. Do you know, like I have to be like that strict on myself. And then I'll usually give myself a time limit. I like to work in threes. So it's usually like, okay, three days, three weeks, like just keep it really tight and tidy. And when I, it also makes it really easy to measure your inspiration that way and track it. So once I hit all those points of like, you know, I've got my, you know, I've got articles that, that resonate. I've got uh, podcasts, I've got, you know, and, and, you know, I'm talking about high quality inputs here too. Like don't just take any fluff from anybody, like go straight to the top, go to the experts. Um, you know, this is where the Google search isn't that great, but I think, um, you know, relying on the trusted sources uh, around you is probably the best way to go. Um, but once I hit those markers of like, okay, I've got X, Y, Z lined up, that's when I'll be like, nothing else is allowed to come in for the next month. So I will actually stop listening to things. I will stop reading things and I will only be consuming or thinking about my perspective. And it's really hard to do that. It takes a lot of diligence because I think, you know, we're creatures of habit and it's really easy to just be like, oh, I'm going to go on my lunchtime walk and pop on a podcast, you know, for inspiration or whatever. But during that second phase, that like incubation phase, when I'm like, you know, really feeding that, the idea, uh, I'll go on a walk, but I won't listen to anything. Or if I do, it'll be, um, you know, music with no lyrics. It'll probably be like binaural beats or something. Um, and you know, once that's what helps me get out of that first initial phase. Um, and you do, you have to, you have to bump yourself out of that and start actually taking it inside and, and, and do that deep, deep, deep thinking. Because if you don't, all you end up doing is regurgitating what you've read mm -hmm. and heard and listened and seen. And you're not putting your own spin on it. 
Now I'm just going to repeat something that you said at the top of that and that creativity thrives in constraints. I want everyone to remember that creativity thrives in constraints because like Dr. Maz said, we can get all of the input and, and get all of the inspiration and feel motivated to actually create something from that. But when we continue to try and search out for more information and more inputs, then we're not only just going to confuse ourselves, we're going to potentially put ourselves in that space of comparisonitis, perfectionism, and not end up doing the thing, which, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that creativity is all about the action as well. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't take action, uh, so, I mean, so many, so many good ideas don't get made and don't happen because people spend way too much time, um, fluffing around at the start. Mm. Um, and taking action is not, it doesn't mean that you have to jump right into creation mode. You just have to get out of that first inspiration stage and into incubation. Cause when you start thinking about something more deeply, you start contemplating what it means to you when you find like a really good reason why you want to do something, taking action is really simple. When you've got that motivation going, it's like a no brainer, you know, and that's going to be different for everybody, you know? So, um, for me, like I get really, I get really inspired by the work itself. So I get really inspired by, okay, what is this, what is this next thing that I'm going to create and share with the world? For other people, it might be, you know, my clients are really struggling with this one problem. I really want to help them solve it. So other people can be your motivation. You know, you might even need cash motivation. You might need a holiday motivation, you know, like, um, I'm very, I'm very reward oriented. So I like to dangle that carrot in front of myself every now and then just, just to keep myself going. And so when you do actually decide to take action, it's not, again, it's that you're not really at that point of sitting down to make the thing, but it is about connecting those dots. So it is about thinking about, you know, what is the thing that I want to make? Why do I want to make it? When am I going to make it? Um, what do I need? What resources do I need? What support do I need? How long do I think this is going to take me? You know, cycling through those like really, really basic fundamental questions to kind of set up the, like build a bit of a, a visual map in your head about, okay, where am I, where am I going? Like I need to point myself in a direction and I need to take a few steps. So I can do that by thinking about just, you know, what's the next little logical step that I can take to build that, you know? And so if we're talking about content, um, you know, the very first thing you should do is get clear on, on your own perspective, you know, and what does that practically look like? You got to sit down and write, <laughs> like that's how a lot of, and, and you know what, like I dare, I'd say that pretty much everything we create in, bris, in business, it starts by writing down a few bullet points on a little piece, piece of paper. Like it's very, very simple. And that is how we take action. Um, it can also be how you keep continuing to take action and checking in with yourself. Like I am a big advocate for journaling, especially for business owners and having that process of reflection, reflecting on the action that you're taking as you're taking it, you know, also that can help just keep, you know, pushing it on. Um, and I also like to think about, you know, on the days where I'm feeling really low energy or I'm not quite sure what action to take, I always think about like, what's, what's one tiny thing I can do to keep the boat moving. So it's like, I just think of like half a paddle at this point, <laughs> just want to dip the paddle in the water, just push it just a little bit. And then maybe, maybe I'll bump my, accidentally bump myself into a current. Yep. It's all about the small steps, isn't it? Yeah. So we've spoken about how creativity can help you stand out, can help you solve problems better in your business. Is there any other benefits that creativity can bring to our business? Oh, hundred percent. So, and this is probably the most important one, um, is creativity is really what allows us to stay relevant. And the reason why I'm mentioning this now is because we're in very uncertain times. And um, there's a great, uh, speaking of great inputs and a great podcast, um, there's a brilliant one with Tim Brown, who's the CEO of IDOU, which is a big creative consultancy firm. And he talks about how when we are in certain times, the businesses that have the most success are the ones that focus on execution. So it's really around improving your processes, your systems, making sure your products are super tight, make sure your customer service channels are working, all that kind of stuff. Um, but when you're in uncertain times, if you focus on execution, you're going to get left behind. 
Because when the market is changing so, so much, what you actually need to be doing is generating alternatives. Um, and this is where creativity steps in uh, because you're having to solve new problems. You're having to solve problems that are evolving really quickly. And like, if you think about the current climate around AI and, you know, and technology, like that is bumping us into uncertainty, even the cost of living crisis, you know, like I think we're all having to do, you know, and there's that, you know, great word pivot, just feel like we're constantly pivoting. Like we're all dizzy from pivoting. Um, but when you, when you step into the creative mindset, you start to look at everything that's happening as a different type of dot. And you go, okay, I have all of these options available to me. I can look at each of the dots individually and be like, are these working for me or are they working against me? And then you can consciously decide, am I going to keep going with this service and, or product or do I need to create something new because the problem's changed? You know, so when you're in a creative mindset rather than an execution mindset, it just opens things up and kind of opens your uh, you know, your receptors up to, to look for opportunities rather than feeling like actually what we need to do right now is just stay the course and go like, like a jackhammer and just like keep going. Creativity has this, um, beautiful after effect of also giving you energy as well. So I think, you know, there's a few things that can, that can help you stay ahead of the curve and creativity is one of them. I think that's really great advice as well. Just looking at, especially in uncertain times, but if we're feeling like we're blocked in terms of our creativity or we don't feel creative, then is there something that we can do to help us skip that so that we can become, you know, less the jackhammer and more the, the bigger thinker? Oh my gosh. There's, there's so many things that you can do. Um, but probably, probably I'd say like the first thing you could do is like rest. Because we're not machines, right? We're not, we don't have the capacity like our computers to just keep going, keep going 24 uh, seven. And where I see a lot of people get blocked is that they are looking at the problem through the same tired eyes that they've been looking at the problem for the last like six months. And so you probably need a circuit breaker. So whether that is, you know, trying and, you know, the best way to circuit break yourself is to break your routine. So if you can try a new activity, particularly one that is away from a screen, perhaps out in nature, like try a pottery class, go, you know, go to a new restaurant or a new cafe, walk a different way to your office, like all of these little tiny things where you're interrupting those original patterns can be so fantastic for A, your mental health, which will only help you in the long run. And then B, just to try and get you out of that funk, you know? Um, and then secondly, we all have places where we get stuck within the creative process that are kind of our default place. And so for me, um, I'm fantastic at starting things, fantastic at getting things going, fantastic at creating, but it's that last 20% of a project that I always get stuck on. Uh, and so it's like right before I need to actually share it and send it live is when all my resistance kicks in you know? And so now that I know that and I've got enough evidence and, you know, we all know where that sticking point is. For some people it's the start, some people it's the middle, some people it's the end. <laughs> and it rarely changes, honestly, like project to project, it rarely changes. So what, if you've got that intel, you can actually plan for it. So uh, if I know that I'm working on something and I'm, I'm approaching that like a 75, 80, 80% 80 mark, that's when I'll tell a trusted friend or an accountability buddy saying, hey, I'm getting really close to finishing this thing. I'm going to need you to needle me on it for like a couple of times in the next week to make sure that I'm finished. Or can I send it to you now just to get some feedback or just to get some energy and motivation, right? So typically the things that, I mean, we're our greatest, biggest blocker, right? <laughs> Especially if you're a solopreneur, it's you. You're the bottleneck always. Um, so getting to under, getting to understand your natural creative flow where you naturally get stuck. And obviously there'll be things that are out of your control that happen. Like you might get sick, you know, you might lose a client, whatever, like this is all the stuff that we can't control. We can't control. We shouldn't focus on it, but internally understanding where, where you naturally get tripped up 
will definitely be a game changer. I love those two things. So the first thing was, you know, finding the circuit breaker. It's like finding the thing that disrupts your normal routine. And I love how you uh, suggested that these don't have to be big things. Like it's just finding the new cafe. And I'm thinking to myself, yes, um, my husband and I have started a walk together with the dog every Sunday. But we've now tended to start the same route and go to the same cafe at the end. So perhaps we need a bit of a circuit break there, Dr. Maz, I think. I love that idea. And then the second one was knowing your default stuck place. So knowing where you are likely to get stuck and then seeking out the support to to push through that. You have given us so much to think about today, Dr. Maz, in terms of creativity, what it means, the benefits it can bring to our business. Have you got any resources that people can tap into? Oh, yeah. Um, you can check out my podcast as well, which is called What Doesn't Kill Us, which I have I have all, all sorts of really deep um, and meaningful conversations with people around the creative process. Definitely follow me on Instagram at Marion Piper Creative. I'm always just goofing off on there. Um, and, like, I think in terms of, like, other resources that I've found really helpful, I like to kind of follow my innate curiosity um, and and take inspiration from like industries and skills that are like the exact opposite of what I do. You know, so I'm really inspired by chefs and restaurants and cooking. I just think it's just such a beautiful, like practical example of the creative process in action. So maybe start to think a little bit more laterally about the things that you're taking in and making sure that they're not, yeah, I guess they're just, they're not too close to what you do because we need, you know, you know, they say variety is the spice of life. Like diversity in our microbiome means we're healthy. So I need, think we need to think about that creatively, about the books we read, the conversations we have, the, um, you know, the environments that we put ourselves into and making sure that they're ones that are different all the time, different rooms, different people, uh, because that's really how you start to live a more creative life. Beautiful words. Now I'll make sure that I pop those links to your podcast and Instagram in the show notes so people can go and check you out and definitely go and listen to the podcast. There has been some amazing guests, particularly recently, that just have these different ways of viewing creativity and how we come to our life and our business as well. So I really recommend you go and listen to that. Now, Dr. Maz, I am all about women owning and using their superpowers. So what would you say is your superpower? I, I am a master dot connector, honestly. Like you're probably, you're probably not surprised by that, but uh, I just have this capacity to, to bring things together in a way that, that other people can't. And it's, you know, from the small things to the big things, um, it's what, it's what has made me a really great copywriter in the past because I can see and hear what people are trying to do and I can match it with the language that it needs to be said in. And even like just bringing together, uh, the different parts of my life, you know, I've never been someone who's followed the checklist or who's, uh, you know, really walked in anybody else's footsteps, which that alone is quite stressful and anxiety inducing, but it's, you know, it's led me down some really amazing paths and, you know, connecting the dots in new and interesting ways is developing practice where, practices where you can hear yourself and you can tap into what is really valuable to you. And having that being a guiding principle, I think, for all of my life um, has really pulled me out of some super dark and scary places, but it's always, you know, it's also thrust me towards some incredible opportunities. So um, and, you know, people, people want to help you when they can understand and see what you're about, like doors will open, windows will open, like universes will be revealed. Like I honestly believe it. <laughs> the more you are you, the easier it gets. Yes. And I say that all the time as well. It, it's hard work trying to be someone else or someone you think you should be. It's so much easier when you be yourself. So thank you for sharing that. And I would definitely say that you have demonstrated today that you are a master dot connector. In helping us understand creativity and how we can bring more of it to our business. I just want to say thank you so much for being on the podcast today and sharing your wisdom with my listeners. I truly appreciate you being here, Dr. Math. Oh my gosh, any opportunity. Thank you so much. Like I love talking about this stuff and could talk about it till I pass out. So probably a good thing that we have put a constraint of time on this podcast. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thanks so much for listening. That's it for another week. 
To get more powerful content in your life, make sure you're following along on socials. My handle is at Meld Business. And just in case you're wondering, the gritty music for this podcast was created by Just Here on SoundCloud. I'd also be super grateful if you took a moment to rate and review this podcast so more amazing women like you can experience the power of content. And if you're like, hell Mel, stop talking. I'm ready to work with you now. Here's how we can work some powerful content magic together. Firstly, come and join the content effect. My membership, Inspiring Women with Service-Based Businesses, to ditch the content chaos and start creating standout content that gets you noticed and makes sales. You can join us by using the link in the show notes or just Google the content effect. The second way we can work together is via my one-on-one packages. We can create a sustainable content strategy or start to build out your client journey. It's up to you. Pop on over to nerdbusinessservices.com.au forward slash services to find out more. Until next time, have a beautiful week and embrace the power of your content. And I do. Thank you.